The UK's financial services sector is displaying renewed optimism and a brighter outlook. A survey of more than 100 senior decision makers at global banks, insurers and wealth and asset managers found that there are strong plans to grow, create skilled jobs and invest in the latest technologies. The Lloyds Bank Financial Institutions Sentiment Survey also found that in the year the UK hosts the United Nations COP26 Climate Change Conference, firms are sharing a strong commitment to drive sustainability both within their own organisations and in the wider economy. Well, earlier my colleague Juliet Foster spoke to Adrian Walkling, Managing, Ed Managing Director, Head of Financial Services at Lloyds Bank, and Andrea Melville, Managing Director, Commercial Business Transformation at Lloyds Bank. She began by asking Adrian to outline what the UK financial services industry is saying about the outlook for the year ahead. We conducted our survey in June and July 2021, just as COVID restrictions slowly started easing. And at that time, almost nine in 10 respondents expected the UK economic growth to improve over the next year. And that's up fivefold from 2020 and tenfold from 2019. In our opinion, it reflects the degree to which obviously the UK was hit quite hard by COVID to start with, uh, but then its subsequent reopening and vaccination rollout successes are fueling this optimism. Um, and overall, actually, 50% expect financial services sector growth to improve compared to just 13% in 2020. And this growth improvement, we believe, is due to the increasingly digital nature of our business. We're less dependent on footfall or physical interaction, obviously, than, than some of our other UK service industries. Uh, for example, only 2% of financial services employee jobs were furloughed compared to 13% across the wider economy. So that digital nature of our business has provided a really solid base for this recovery and is fueling the rebound that we, we see going on now. Uh, in other good news, 66% expect to grow revenues in the year ahead, while nearly 45% expect to grow headcount. So looking forward, what can we glean to be the industry's top strategies in the coming year? Well, Juliet, our clients told us that in their top strategic priorities for the year ahead, Technology came out, 77% of respondents um, noted that that was the key one for them. Sustainability was very high at 59%, as was expanding in existing markets, also at 59%. Developing new products and services came in around 50%. And lastly, preparing for regulatory change was 39%. And it's no surprise that tech remains top, and I'll defer to Andrea's expertise in this space and focus on the other key strategic area for financial services, that of sustainability. Uh, now, clearly, there are two areas of activity on sustainability that the financial services sector is involved with. Firstly, what we're doing to get our own house in order, for example, ensuring the green, green nature of our buildings and property portfolios, as well as our supply chains. Secondly, though, and where we have the potential for most leverage and impact, is working with the clients of the financial services sector to help them make positive change happen in their businesses. And Andrea, we've heard that tech remains the top strategic priority for another year with the cloud, advanced programming, advanced programming interfaces, APIs and indeed data science given as the top tech investment priorities for many financial institutions. But what are you seeing as the main drivers and aims that banks and financial institutions are actually trying to achieve? What's the goal here? Well, COVID-19 has had an extraordinary impact on businesses, society and the economy. It's also accelerated an already established trend towards digitisation. So at Lloyd's, we've seen an increase in digitally active customers. There are now more than 17 and a half million. Whilst the importance of digital banking transformation existed far before the pandemic, the disruptions of the past 18 months have demonstrated that in order to succeed in the future, banks need to continuously evolve the way they think about their customers and clients moving towards a more integrated experience, which goes beyond traditional financial needs with timely and relevant personalised experiences. It's therefore no surprise that tech remains a top strategic priority for financial institutions this year, as it's a key enabler to all of this, with key investment themes including cloud APIs and data science. Um, and in that field, I think about machine learning and AI as well. Um, and within this space, if I started with cloud, um, as evidenced in this year's Financial Institution Sentiment Survey, cloud remains the top priority for respondents. And it was last year's top priority too. And this reflects cloud technology's integral role in supporting an acceleration towards digital banking. Next on to APIs. APIs are not a new trend, but they're becoming more mainstream. 
More than two and a half million UK consumers and businesses now use open banking enabled products to help them manage their finances, access credit and make payments. And UK open banking API core volumes have increased from 67 million in 2018 to nearly 6 billion at the end of 2020. It's a massive acceleration in just three years. And APIs are a great tool and enable the creation of better propositions, a more joined up experience and simpler processes. At Lords, we've launched several APIs. Two payment examples are the Payables API and the Pay From Bank API. So we launched the Payables API a couple of years ago now. It enables clients to send faster payments direct from their systems and their workflow without human intervention. And in the 12 months up to June, we've processed over a million transactions and almost five and a half billion in value on the Payables API. A newer offering is the Pay From Bank API. This enables an account to account transfer using the faster payments rails. And a great example of where this has been used effectively is with our client United Response, uh, which is a charity that provides support to people with learning difficulties, autism and mental health needs. And they really needed to launch a new payment method on their donation website, allowing the supporters to make quick, secure and frictionless donations direct from the bank accounts without the need to enter payment details. And Pay From Bank API creates a simple way for donors to do this. And it means they receive their donations in near real time and reduce processing costs. OK, and, and Adrian, come back into the conversation because, look, I want, I want to broaden things out because it is encouraging to see that firms are planning to recruit more people compared to last year. We're talking about 44 per cent against 14 per cent. But skill shortages were actually flagged by at least a third of respondents in key areas like ESG. So how do you think financial institutions can best retain and indeed attract the important talent that they need? Well, for anyone looking at the next 10 to 20 years of their career in financial services, sustainability expertise and knowledge is going to be key to their success and ours in financial services. Um, you know, you were right, absolutely right. Um, the, uh, the flag, the main challenges um, were around um, uh, the lack of access to skills, actually cited as a risk, um, which means firms are going to be targeting other sectors in their search for talent. Uh, at Lloyd's, like many of our peers, we've taken a twofold approach to the talent challenge for sustainability. Uh, firstly, upskilling our own colleagues uh, with access to market-leading courses, working with partners like the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. And secondly, and critically, hiring diverse talent from public policy, legal industry and green finance backgrounds to gather together to get that critical mass of cognitive diversity, which we need to help our clients in this space. OK, well, it's good to end on a note of optimism. But Andrea and Adrian, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to speak to you.